day to our audience of entrepreneurship couch across the globe. Today we have decided to invite a psychologist, Dr. Edwin Narire. He is a renowned human resources uh, practitioner, a business coach, and an international psychologist. We have thought we needed to invite him onto the program to talk to us about psychology, how a lot of entrepreneurs have been affected due to COVID-19. So we thought we could bring him in and then he can talk to us. Dr. Edwin Arire, welcome to the program. Uh, thanks, thanks, Yabad. Dr. Narire, we have got challenges to do with COVID-19. A lot of people are working from home. But before we can talk about the psychological effect it has had on entrepreneurs, we want to start to talk about recruitment. We know that you are actually a registered chartered human resources practitioner. So allow us to talk to you about that. Okay. Dr. Naririle, recruitment and selection is a key aspect of business. What is it that we talk about when we are talking about recruitment and selection? Uh, thanks, Shepard. Every business is defined by the people who work in it. And those people, they shape culture and the success of the, the organization. So for people to join an organization, they have to be recruited and uh, be selected into available positions. So when we talk of selection, we are just talking about getting the best candidates from the fishing pond. Mm. Why is it critical for an organization or for entrepreneurs to make sure that they've carried out recruitment and selection properly? Shepard, like I indicated, the success of any organization, it depends on the people who work in that business. So if you hire ducks or chickens, you can't dream of flying above the trees. You have to go for eagles if you want to sow. So recruitment and selection defines whether you're going to hire ducks or eagles. So entrepreneurs should appreciate that uh, the success of their business depends entirely on the people they bring on to the bus. Mm, mm, mm. Dr. Nari, the fantastic. We are learning from you today. Now, for any person who is a layman, when they hear about recruitment and selection, they think it's something that can be done haphazardly. From your own expertise, are there any particular recommended processes and procedures that one has got to follow? You, you are very right, Shepard. Uh, people think that uh, recruitment and selection is uh, just an easy process where you call in for CVs, you do a short uh, interaction of 15 to 20 minutes. Obviously, if you are serious about your business, who you bring on board and how you bring them on board becomes very, very critical. I, I want to tell you that um, the only time every person comes close to perfection is on their CVs or resumes. That's the only time they come to perfection. So you need to appreciate that uh, even in interviews, people can lie, people can act. I was telling my friends that uh, everyone is an actor. You can actually see it during interviews, <laughs> basically because people rehearse before interviews. But as psychologists, we appreciate that we've got tools which can help entrepreneurs to increase their chances of hiring the best people. Mm. Dr. Narire, now you have brought me to the key and critical aspect of recruitment and selection. You, besides being a registered chartered human resources practitioner and a business coach, you are a well-known, renowned international psychologist. May you share with us what is involved when we are talking about psychometric tests? Thanks, Shepard. When we talk of psychometric tests, we are basically talking about... Um, trying to predict the performance of individuals on the basis of their performance on the tests that you give them. So psychometric tests uh, focus primarily on the cognitive ability of the individuals, that is your verbal, your numerical, 
and abstract reasoning skills. Psychometric tests also focus on personality testing, motivation, and occupational interest. We also measure on managerial competencies to, to assess to say, how does A perform in terms of uh, the leadership competencies that are required? And in terms of complexity of the psychometric test, uh, it relies on um, the levels, because you start from the clerical to, to top management. Hmm. Doc, you seem to be explaining something that is a bit complicated, not only for me, but for my audience as well. But uh, maybe to probe you further, are you saying one could have uh, managerial qualifications but still fail on psychometric tests and after you've done them, you realize that he or she is not a perfect fit for a particular position. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for that one, Shepard. I, I don't believe in passing or failing uh, psychometric tests okay. as a psychologist. All right. Uh, I talk about the fit uh, between the person, their environment, and the job itself. If there is no perfect fit between the three, like uh, there is likely to be poor performance, but you can't really blame the person only. Maybe the environment is not suitable for the person. Maybe the job is not configured to bring the best out of the person. So any poor performance is an interplay of the three factors, the person, the job, and the environment. So when we talk about psychometric tests, we are saying, you, you measure the person, you check on the environment, you check on the job and see where these three can interact to give the best out of uh, the combination. Hmm. Doc, assuming my company has hired your services to carry out psychometric tests and uh, I do not have the capacity to interpret the psychometric tests, do you go as further as helping the entrepreneurs as well as the business people to actually interpret these psychometric tests? Precisely. That's, that's the role of the, the psychologist. Just like when you get a prescription from the doctor, you go to a pharmacist, right? And you get the required um, prescriptions and uh, the, the medicines. The psychologist will try to explain in simple terms what it means, like the strengths and weaknesses of the person, the, what you need to change in the environment for the person to flourish. By the way, psychometric tests are not just limited to the recruitment aspect, but also in terms of development, to say how do you develop a person? Because you know what they are made of. So you can know how to develop them. You can know like uh, their, their progression into managerial roles. You can also use that information in terms of uh, coaching and uh, other related HR things. Mm. Doc, interesting. My audience is actually composed of uh, aspiring entrepreneurs and those that are entrepreneurs already. But I, I've also discovered that there are other people who have come to realize that they also need to continue watching our shows. Can I ask, is it possible for you to carry out psychometric tests on even young people who are not yet even thinking about employment such that they grow up knowing what are their psychometric traits or characteristics? Precisely. Like you, you, you find um, some of the people who are supposed to be tested for career guidance are school kids. Most of the time, school kids are pushed to do certain subjects and major in certain things. But you find, you, you find the problem is um, they are not suited for those subjects the parents may be pushing them for, uh, or they are not suited for certain courses uh, maybe their teachers or significant others can push them to. So it is very important to check at that particular age to say, for John, is John for, uh, good for STEM subjects or for the arts? so you can help the youngsters at that particular age. Mm. Doc, I'll come back to entrepreneurship. From your own experience and from the tests that you have carried so far, 
does your psychometric testing help to pick entrepreneur in terms of their traits? Precisely, Shepard. Uh, it's not just about picking entrepreneurs. It's uh, trying to help entrepreneurs be the best of what they are designed to be. So you find that uh, the most successful entrepreneurs are risk takers. They are aggressive. You find that uh, most of them are very persistent. They are driven. They are tough-minded. And they've got a lot of self-discipline and raise a sharp focus. So when you do a personality test, you can pick those traits and you can now say, how do we develop this further? And also one thing that you should understand is um, there is the dark side of personality, which we call derailers. Okay. And uh, from these derailers, you can actually predict what can derail a person. For example, what can derail an entrepreneur? So I, I found from my experience, the people that I coach, like some are derailed by dictatorial tendencies, some by arrogance, others by unbridled ambition. So some take too much risk, others lack self-discipline after some point. So by picking on these traits, you can actually help and coach. You can help even find a mentor or a coach for a particular aspect and the entrepreneur can grow because they know what is likely to derail them, what is likely to make them successful. Hmm. Dr. Naririre, you happen to be a renowned, well-known international psychologist, but I must admit, they seem to be an underappreciation of this expertise in Africa. Would you agree with me that there is still more that needs to be done to raise awareness of the existence of psychologists as well as what they can do to help entrepreneurship and business? I, I agree with you, Shepard. Um, in uh, Western countries, you find that uh, the visits to a psychologist are very numerous. Uh, people visit clinical psychologists, um, counseling psychologists, companies rely on industrial psychologists. For me, I'm an industrial psychologist. I deal with the industry aspects of psychology, like the work-related aspects from the time the person enters the employment um, field, the tenure, and the exit. That is where my expertise is. So there are other psychologists who take care of uh, the clinical side, mental health challenges. But your point, Shepard, Yes, there is underappreciation. It's part of development. I think uh, there are groupings like uh, the Psychological uh, Zimbabwe Psychological Association, which is doing something in terms of uh, publicizing what psychologists can do, especially in the country. There is also the Pan-African Psychology Grouping, which focuses on Africa specifically. There are international groups of uh, psychologists talking about how psychologists can help people uh, and to improve their well-being. Mm. Doc, we are very grateful for the information you have provided us with so far. Now we come to the crux of the matter, why we invited you today onto the platform. A lot of entrepreneurs and business people included have suddenly found themselves being confined to homes. They are not able to continue working from their workplaces anymore. And you would agree with me that this has actually put a strain on entrepreneurs. What are some of the effects that this working from home tends to affect the entrepreneurs? How does this affect entrepreneurs and business people? You are right, Shepard. Uh, COVID-19 has brought a number of mental health issues on the part of the entrepreneur and uh, including their employees alike. And you're quite right to say entrepreneurs, by their very nature, they don't like to be limited and to still be, they don't want to be locked down. So the mere fact that they are constrained in a home and their movement is restricted, it's stressful to them. And uh, being unable, uh, unable to interact with their suppliers, their customers is very stressful. 
and it causes untold anxiety. And unfortunately, if this stress is not managed, it can lead to burnout or other uh, mental health challenges on the part of the entrepreneur. So if you look at uh, the future right now, because of COVID-19, the future is very, very uncertain for the entrepreneur. And uh, the entrepreneur becomes very, very anxious about that future. For some people, there are no sales, so the businesses are likely to collapse. So the entrepreneur will be thinking, what can I do? How can I survive? Some entrepreneurs borrowed from banks to grow their businesses. So if you are not generating any revenue, obviously you will be worried to say, what will happen? We have seen it across the globe where businesses are collapsing, businesses are failing to pay employees. So you look at the bailouts which have been given, even by the states or some Western countries, the amounts cannot really match the needs. So it causes stress on the part of the entrepreneur to say, am I going to get the bailout? Is it going to, to be enough to help me to restart, to restock, uh, to, to, to start my operations? So it will be difficult on the part of the, uh, the entrepreneur. If we come back to Zim, even the legislative environment is itself uh, stressful. Like uh, last week when there was um, that uh, downgrading to level two, entrepreneurs or, and business owners were asked to, to test their people before they open. So you are talking about an like some young entrepreneurs, they don't have testing kits, they don't know how to go about it, they don't even know what to do if like some of their employees test positive. So it's a stressful environment on the part of the entrepreneur. Hmm. What then are your recommendations to entrepreneurs in terms of uh, what is it that they need to do once they've been affected psychologically with this lockdown? Th thanks so much, um, Shepard. It's, uh, it's difficult to give uh, all the recommendations in a 15-minute interview, but I, I will try my best. Okay. I think one thing entrepreneurs uh, need to do is to, to be aware that they are vulnerable to stress under COVID. Entrepreneurs are not machines, so they should not play macho. It doesn't help. They should be aware that they are affected in one way or the other because COVID has impacted on everyone. So what they should focus on is surviving. They should focus on surviving first. I, I like what Jack Ma of Alibaba said recently, that the best profit for this financial year is your life. Money we can recover. The businesses can recover. We, we can get other suppliers, we can solicit for, for, for other customers. But if we lose our lives because of mental health challenges, it will be difficult to recover. So entrepreneurs should not take it personal. They need to separate themselves from the business. That's why we urge entrepreneurs to create systems. Systems help entrepreneurs uh, to insulate themselves against the challenges because uh, they won't take it emotionally. I also urge business people to take a break, exercise, they should meditate, they should even pray, they should show gratitude. Being alive, like Jack Ma indicated, is the greatest profit for 2020. Mm. So they should find time to interact with their families, but social support becomes important. That's why we have business groupings like your CZI, your ZNCC, or even other smaller business groupings so that people interact and give each other social support. It helps lessen the emotional burden. Mm. Doc, uh, we are very grateful for the time that you've given us. We hope to engage you again on this platform. The next time that we are going to engage you, I'm very excited about the psychometric tests that you have said would talk to entrepreneurs and highlight some of the things that they may need to work on such that they end up being great entrepreneurs. Once again, thanks very much for your time, Doc. 
Pleasure. Thanks, uh, Shepard. To our viewers across the, the globe, that has been Dr. Edwin Naririre, who is a registered psychologist. He is also a chartered human resources practitioner and a business coach. Please continue to subscribe and watch out for our future shows.